Hey everybody, RoseCloud9 here, and I have a really fun kit to build today. It is Airfix's new tooled Spitfire Mark 9. Um, just to clarify, that is what MK means. It means Mark, and IC or IXC. Sorry, IXC is this is uh, Roman numeral 9, and this is the variant C of the 9. Um, just to clarify, there's some people that don't know that. And anyways, um, I built this kit before, uh, quite a few years ago, um, probably like a year after it came out. And uh, my hobby store hasn't been picking it up lately, so I found this in Calgary yesterday. Paid more than I wanted to for it, but uh, whatever, it was $13 instead of 10 In fact, I'm going to get rid of this silly sticker. Come on, there we go. But I kind of knew that going in, that, that I was probably going to be overcharged for it. But anyways, my hobby store hasn't got this kit in for a while now. So, it's, um, like I said, it's a really, really fun kit. I really wanted to build it again because I wanted to build it as a twin-seater uh, trainer. It has an extra uh, canopy in the back there. And I figured out how to do this with this kit would be pretty easy to do. So, I can you know do it. I've got all the parts I need now, most of the parts I needed this kit and uh, you can follow along with this too if you want to because the conversion of it isn't going to be too awfully difficult or different. Now since I bought this kit you know years ago they have changed some things on it and this was the most surprising thing in the kit. This was really cool. Uh, you get this double canopy here and they're identical Everything on here is identical. You get two gun sights, you get two canopies. It's like Airfix knew I was going to be building this as a twin seater, and so they did this for me. So thank you, Airfix. That's really awesome. Um, the, the the seam lines on the canopy, you know, the canopy frame and stuff like that, they're gone, basically. You know, I can't, unfortunately, mask it off, um, you know, with the tape it over, which I want to, but there's still you know trace enough of them there you you'll know where to have and paint them which I didn't really want to do I wanted to hopefully airbrush it but um, whatever it's not that big of a deal uh, and here uh, this looks a little different to me compared to when I built it I think some of the lines are different like very very minimal but uh, when I built it it was a light gray and now it's this you know their typical gray blue plastic looks absolutely beautiful all these panel lines I can't wait to, to wash those up and everything and there is no cockpit detail whatsoever in here there's like a little bit of like a, of a frame where the gauges would go and stuff but there's a little notch there for the gun sight so absolutely nothing there it's kinda sad uh, I'll get to that in a minute and uh, here we have the wings and they look very nice very clean. There's there's flash on like a few areas, but it's incredibly minor. Um, and then you get this nice nice new pilot. And the only problem with the pilot though is he's modern Air Force. So um, I was really excited to see him in the kit because he's he's really cool and because you know Airfix has that one pilot figure that they use all the time. And, uh, you know, you get that guy for German aircraft and Japanese and American. And it's just kind of nice now that they're actually including um, figures that are appropriate to each country. And, uh, yeah, he's modern. So I don't know if they've ever, like, re-released him with, like, another kit. Because I don't buy any jets and stuff like that. But I hope so, because he's a very nice figure. Here's the chair. It's actually a seat, you know. Like, look at that. That's not at all what it looks like in a Spitfire. And it goes on this floorboard here, and on here, there's like the, this is like the headrest right there. That's all you get for cockpit detail, guys. It's pretty, pretty bare bones, which is, it's, it's a complaint that a lot of people have with the kit, because it's a brand new kit, but there was like no in interior cockpit detail, and everyone was kind of scratching their heads going like, is there an aftermarket set or what? But, no, nope. for me personally, I don't care, because when you put the, you put the canopy on, the bubble is, is kind of thick, you don't even see inside, so, again, I don't care. But, uh, here we have the bottom of the wing, and, I, like I said, I think some of the detail has just been 
like tweaked to be more accurate. Um, but it looks really, really good. Like they've done a fantastic job of on this, on the plastic parts of this kit. And taking a look at the instructions here. Now I know that the instructions are a bit different. Uh, first off, this is a color chart that you get. You get the two different colors here. Um, this was because I, I still have it. This was a glossy poster about the same size, but it was double-sided glossy. It wasn't on the. It wasn't incorporated into the instructions like this, and uh, the colors were a bit more. Uh, vibrant than this. These are a little dull, but who cares about that because you still know what's going on anyways. And the instructions here are pretty basic Airfix type instructions. You know, they're really easy to read. I don't recall them having this though. I could be wrong on it. This is something that Airfix has been doing a lot lately. Like this is the, this shows you how to put on the ailerons. They're supposed to be at a 90 degree angle, um, which I really like by the way Airfix please keep doing that because I find them to be really helpful but I don't remember that being there in the in the first one so that might be a bit different here's something I noticed that's a little odd is this is the stencil diagram and the Spitfire they have on here has a different tail it has a more pointed tail this was on later Spitfires typically and the one that you get in the kit is a rounded one so I'm just wondering is there going to be a chance of an aftermarket set or something, you know, another Spitfire release with a pointed tail? That would be kind of cool. And, oh yeah, I should just show this really quick. You get two markings. This is a Polish uh, squadron in Tunisia. That's in Africa. Uh, or is it in Africa? I can't remember anymore. Anyways, it might be. If not, someone can correct me. And this is the one again that I built, the John E. Johnson, with this beautiful Canadian markings on it. Yay! And uh, yeah, this was this was wrong. Wait a minute. Let me just see this decals. Hey, hey, that's weird. Here's the decals. They cut out on the decals. Hold on a second. I know I have them in here. Here they are. Huh. That's cool. They, uh, they, they don't include the D-Day stripes anymore. This is, this is from the original one. Weird. Huh. Wonder why they did that. Anyways, uh, I guess you have to paint them on yourself, which is what I did anyways, but you get this beautiful, beautiful decal sheet, guys. Cartograph decals. They're, they look absolutely wonderful, and I'm not using a single decal on this sheet. Nope, not one. I have, um, this is how I'm building it. I guess I should have started with this. I said it's a twin seater. Hold on, let me just move all this stuff around here. So, I'm building it as a twin seater, but the color of it is all this dark green. It's just one shade of dark green, top to bottom you know nose included you know I think the only color I'll be painting is like the uh, tires and the propeller and it just had red stars everywhere it had it on the tail it had it on the fuselage and the top and bottom of the wings so these are from the 1200 scale Li2 from Zvezda uh, you might recall I turned it into a DC3 or no sorry C47 in D-Day markings and I bought another one and I'm going to use the stars from here. They're going to fit perfectly for what I need on this kit. So I bought two of those. So that's why I'm not using any of the decals in there. And I'm kind of thinking, I'm kind of betting, I could build this kit in like a day. I'm really tempted to just today, because today is kind of a free day for me. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve, and I can kind of do whatever I want. And I'm kind of tempted to just try and build this in one day. So if you're following me along and you want to build a twin seat or two, it's pretty simple to do. I've got some styrene bits here. These are just scraps that I had on my desk. And I'm probably going to use these. So I need a bit of styrene. Because I'm going to make 
a very, very basic cockpit components. Very, very simple. Nothing, I'm not going to, you know, like do the side walls. I'm basically going to replicate here on here. So, not much. Um, I need crystal clear. This is to uh, glue the windows down. Not only glue the windows down, but I have to make part of the windows. Um, and I'm also got my scribing saw, which I'm going to use to cut this open and to fit in the other window. And like I said, I have this here I have the extra set of windows so I'm pretty excited and geared to go with that so I'm gonna go get started building the cockpit right now and like I said I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna be able to build this in a day I'm, I, I'm really kind of tempted to try now but uh, I'll see how far I get today at least because I don't know what's gonna happen the rest of the day anyways guys let's uh, let's get building this thing okay so I've cut the back seat out. It wasn't too difficult to do. It was a little awkward, but I managed to get it in the end, and I'm quite happy with it. I just got to sand it down just a little bit more to get the angle correct and clean it up a little bit. But, um, yeah, it seems to work. And all I did was look at the pictures of a real one. I used these stencils here, and I drew out where it was supposed to fit. And uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with how it's gonna how it's gonna sit there in the in the end. So it's gonna be a bit like that, and the other canopy should fit onto here. So it should be pretty good. And then I'm just gonna fill in whatever gap there is with the uh, crystal clear, and that should that should do it. You know, just to kind of fill it in a bit um, <clears throat> yeah now's the uh, cockpit section and I have to I have to dig around my spares because I think I have something that will be like a good backup seat but uh, for now all I'm going to do is cut this out and rest around this sprue There we go. Caught on there. And here's the seat, yeah. So heck, I might just make another seat. I don't know yet. But, uh, all I'm going to do is trace, um, this part onto a sheet of styrene, like this. And it does not have this peg on the back, so I can cut that off. And I'm just going to make, like, an exact copy of this like that and it's gonna fit in here on the back oh, let me actually show what I'm talking about it's gonna fit here in the back and I'm just going to uh, extend this just a little bit more I don't know how this fits on here I think it fits yeah about like that so I'm just gonna make this a little longer like I'll, I'll make like a floor of styrene in here in the bottom and I'll put like a little seat on it and uh, probably the only thing I'll do is I, I need to actually look at a picture of this but I, it looks like it's just a piece um, kinda like this in between it only comes to about here though like to f it's the 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 bridge in between here so it, it only comes to about here because there's a control panel but I'm probably gonna make it to about something like that just something to fill in there so you don't you know because you're gonna see in there but you don't really want to see it and then I have to um, fill in this access panel on the back that needs to be filled in that'll be really easy to do and then once it's done I have to uh, rescribe a smaller door right here it's half the size of the regular door I'm not sure why but uh, that's the way it is, so that's the way I'm going to build it. So I'm going to go and build all the rest of this stuff here. And like I said, it's basically just copying all the interior there and making it my own. So that won't take me uh, too long, I think. So what I've done here is basically, like I mentioned earlier, just the bare bones. I have uh, 
I added in the cockpit here. I extended it with this sheet of styrene in the back. Raised it up, but just by, you know, millimeter. Um, copied out the back headrest here and this, and um, replicated that in the back here. And it uh, looks pretty good. It's a pretty tight fit, which I'm happy about. And then I just kind of made a quick chair mimicking whatever this one is. So once this is dry enough, I'm going to paint it green. And I might just paint the chairs brown just to break up the, the tedium of green and green. And yeah, have a little bit of a, another color in there. But it looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. And uh, yeah, once it's dry, I think what I'm going to do next is, uh, like right now, is just paint this in with some uh, surface, liquid surface primer, this stuff here. So that'll take a little while to, to dry, but it'll be pretty thin, so I won't have to worry too long about it. And uh, yeah, then I'll get to constructing the rest of the plane after that. Alright, so most of my problems right now are involve waiting for basically paint and or glue to dry, but uh, I'm actually getting, you know, I've got the fuselage together, I just clamped it off, so I'm getting there. Uh, filled in this little, this little box there and smeared it over a couple times. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna leave it alone for now. Propeller spins nice and freely, so I'm pretty, whoop, pretty happy about that. And uh, yeah, Glue took off the cut off the wings to see just how they fit. It's an excellent fit. Um, this trainer has um, no cannon here, but it does have the um, smaller place for the other cannon. Um, the two cannons here, you know, usually one is sticking out here. Um, that was, that was, you know, place for they could put, where they could put the cannon, but the other little bulge right here, um, that was also the cannon, but it was on this side. So it could either go on one of the sides, uh, that, that was just a preference for the, uh, pilots, whatever they wanted. So what I think I'm going to do is put just the one nub in there and I might actually put the the cannon in but just cut it off and sand it off I might just who knows I might just fill it in instead it'll be a little bit easier I think but uh, yeah now I'm gonna glue on uh, as soon as this dries just a little bit more I'm gonna glue all this on I have to figure out which intake goes there but um, yeah, it's coming along and fits great so I'm not running into any any problems and I did paint the seats brown as you can see just again just add a little color to the model so uh, I'm gonna go leave this alone and come back to it in a little while and continue working and sanding and cleaning I've got a sad sad boxer here Pella Pella come here Pella Pella come here Don't tell him why you're sad. Why are you so sad? Hmm? She's very, very sad. I'll tell you why. My goal to build this um, Spitfire in one day, which was, it was an attainable goal, but it has been nulled by the Christmas season, the rush. It's the 23rd today. And, uh,. Yeah, a whole bunch of stuff happened today. Uh, you know, I thought I'd be able to just build this and forget about kind of the rest of the day. The youngest boxer, uh, Ginger, she's the one that likes to climb up on me. Uh, we had to take her to the vet today. She was barfing and it was coming up as a red mucus. So we were very concerned she wasn't eating. And... Uh, the vet did an x-ray on her and found something in her stomach, so he operated on her this afternoon and found a piece of plastic in her stomach. And uh, he's saving it so he can identify what it might be. I'm very nervous because they like to dig around in garbages because they're 
uh, incredibly curious creatures, and I'm hoping uh, it's not one of these sprues here, because I cut them out. Like, when I use up all the pieces, I cut the sprues into small sections so they don't really poke through garbage bags and stuff like that. And, yeah, I'm hoping it's not one of those, because if it is, I will feel terribly guilty and probably give up modeling. Um, but, yeah, we had to do that today, and she's okay now, for the most part, by what we understand. And, like I said, it's Christmas Rush. Everyone's coming here on the 25th. And, uh, yeah, I'm not really looking forward to it uh, in a lot of ways because it's a lot of cleaning up you have to do. But, back to the Spitfire because that's what you're watching this video for. And uh, I glued the wings on, as you can see. I just took the clamps off. And the fit of the wings is excellent. They look beautiful, too. They've really got the shape of the Spitfire wings on there. And I always like this when I'm building a Spitfire and I haven't glued the um, ailerons on yet. Is uh, you just look at it like this, and it just looks so much more sleek and sophisticated without the ailerons. It's kind of weird, you know. And uh, it's just a, you know, like I said, just a bit more sleek. And uh, so yeah, these will be glued on here next. And uh, I thought I was going to be able to just sand it down and not have to worry about uh, filling any parts in. I was wrong. I have to fill in. There, there needs to be some putty on here, here on the tail, and the bit on the underside. Very, very minimal. The only part I'm really worried about is here on the, on the um, gun caps. So I have to fill in the one um, and leave the other one as a, as a bulge. So, oh yeah, I also filled in I think I showed that briefly. I filled in the radio compartment here. So that's been filled in with the putty and sanded down. So the next part, yeah, it's to just clean all that up. I have to figure out how to mask off the canopy here. I don't know how to do it yet. But that's going to be my next kind of struggle with this build, is how to mask that off. Because what I was, because what I was going to do is... Um, cut off the other bubble top there and glue it on the back and then fill it in with uh, crystal clear and that would kind of get that swooping um, part that the that this has and that was kind of my that was kind of my trick in building this uh, Spitfire so uh, but if I put like tape over that it's just gonna rip it off when I'm done and uh, it, which would be easy to just fill in again but like I said, I'm not quite sure how I want to do it. I might just glue the other one on and glue this one on and then just cut tape around it. I'm not sure. I'll figure that out in a little while. But it's coming along pretty well. I'm quite satisfied with it. I'm going to glue this on in a little while. This is the bigger intake. I like it quite a bit. Looks very nice. It needs to be sanded a bit smoother. This, the front part of it, of the intake, is a bit higher than the back, so it's just going to be to file that down a bit, just so it, you know, kind of glides a bit more, I guess. And then I'm going to put the landing gear on, and there's a there's a chance with the putty drying, if it dries within the next few hours, which it might, I might be able to sand it and paint it. But if not, I'll probably have to wait till like the 26th or the 27th to paint it. So like I said, life gets in the way. I, I don't get to complete my uh, kind of 24-hour build uh, challenge of the Spitfire, which was, you know, by all realistic expectations, kind of a long shot. But that's why it's a hobby. You get to build it at your own leisure whenever you want, whenever you have free time. Um, I think we forget that sometimes. But... Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. It's it's actually really coming together, and I'm I'm getting my twin seater Spitfire, so I'm super excited about that. So I have more work to do, and I'm gonna let this dry just a bit more. And uh, actually, heck, maybe I'll just putty it in here and then get to work again. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you guys whatever the next part is. So this is just gonna be very very quick here. I just wanted to show you this. This is really cool. Check it out. I got them both on here. I used the um, Tamiya scribing saw here, and I cut them off in half. And uh, yeah, 
I've got the one bump there and I had to do a little sanding to this one. I'm not actually going to have to use much crystal clear on it like I thought. But uh, I'm pretty excited. Man, it looks pretty cool. So I figured out how to mask it. That's kind of why I'm doing this video here. And what I'm going to do is take some Tamiya tape and I'm going to tape the inside of here, the back. And I'm going to tape it to here. So I'm just going to make a bridge so it'll fill in the gap there. I'm going to just temporarily glue it. Uh, but before I actually temporarily glue it, I'm going to use this. You guys might remember this liquid masking film. And it's basically, you just paint it on and uh, you, you go. So, And when it's done, I can just peel it off. So I'm going to do that. And uh, if that dries, I actually might be able to airbrush this thing tonight. So I've got some stuff that I'm going to go do. Like I'm going to go tape this up right now and uh, put this stuff on, let it dry, come back to it, and if it's good to go, uh, like I said, I'm going to airbrush, because it's pretty cool. That I, I didn't expect to get this far. I'm really impressed with how how that looks. I'm quite pleased with that. So yeah, my Twin Seater trainer is coming along, and uh, I'm almost done, in a way. Not much more to do. Alright, so this is just a quick how to use liquid masking film. Uh, this is a huge bottle. It was either this size or one even bigger than that. They didn't have smaller bottles there. Um, you can also buy Micro Mask. And this is blue, dark blue. It's basically the same thing. Um, but uh, I just, I'm just i going to use this stuff because I really want to get rid of this bottle. It's just a huge bottle to use. This is like like the most I would ever use in my whole modeling career till I was like 92. I bet you I'd only get like halfway through this bottle. So anyways, I'm just going to show you how to use this really quick. And uh, it's this kind of grayish, milky blue stuff. Um, and uh, here's the windows. And you can see I put a layer on there. And it dries pretty clear. So I'm just going to apply another layer on here. I'm going to try and catch the edges. It looks like it's shrinking a little bit as it's drying, which is okay because it says to add on another layer. Even though it has shrunk a little bit, there is going to be a very, very faint residue of it, like where it used to be. So I can just, um, it'll, it'll, you know, catch on to that and make a second coat. And you just paint it on with the brush. You can also airbrush this stuff. I think you use water to dilute it. There's instructions for it on the bottle, but I'm not going to go through all the time of airbrushing. Plus, I don't like cleaning stuff like this out of an airbrush, you know, especially like a needle action. Um, that's quite a bit more work. So now, to clean it up, you just wash it off in water. And it's, a, it's acrylic, so it's water-soluble. And uh, there you go. Just dry that off, and the bristles might be a little bit stiff, so you just, next time you use it, you just dunk it in the water a little bit, and it'll move around again, but it's not going to, I don't think it's going to damage your paintbrush at all. Uh, I haven't had anything, you know, problems with it. So, yeah, I'm going to, I have to go do some work really quick, I'm going to let this dry, and probably by the time I get back, it'll be, you know, like, safe to touch, and, uh, got some paint stuck on here. Anyways. Um... So yeah, I'm going to, once that's dry enough, I'm just going to like have uh, two little dots of uh, crystal clear, like probably like here, 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 something like that. Just very, very minor little dots and uh, I'll leave that on there and uh, it'll be ready to go and uh, I can paint it all green and what my, my hope is is to paint it again dark green XF61 and uh, to paint the whole thing this nice dark green and uh, tomorrow come back to it and in the morning give it a layer of future and maybe decolate it the, uh, that night uh, it'll probably be dry enough to uh, to do that but I'll wait and see so the next thing you'll see is uh, some most likely the next thing you'll see is some airbrushing <laughs> 